Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about vacations to Pompeii, Italy. So before starting this video like this video. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. The ruined city of Pompeii is located at the foot of Mount Vesuvius, a volcano that erupted in AD 79, engulfing the city and encasing it in 6 meters of ash and pumice stone. What we see now, together with the nearby ruins of Herculaneum, is the best example of a Roman town and its way of life anywhere. It's simple to see why this is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Italy. Pompeii was heavily devastated by an earthquake only 16 years before it was destroyed, and its population of 20,000 people had not yet finished rebuilding. People began fleeing at the first hint of the eruption, and just approximately 2,000 people were stranded in the city when the final flood descended like a tidal wave. Pompeii had been abandoned for centuries until excavations began in the 18th century, when around three-fifths of the original area, the city walls had a radius of three kilometers, was discovered. Early excavators transported everything to the Naples Museum, but archaeologists have left objects in place since 1911, making the newly dug regions the most intriguing. Expect to be amazed by how vivid an impression of ancient life you get in the homes, businesses, and public spaces of the city. It's impossible to avoid the impression that when the eruption happened, everyone was going about their business as usual, never imagining that their final acts would become a window into history. Pompeii is one of Italy's most famous tourist destinations, and it's easy to get there from Naples or Sorrento, or even as a day trip from Rome. Antiquarium Regardless of how eager you are to see this legendary city, it is well worth your time to visit this museum first. You'll see many of the objects discovered during the excavations that were either too delicate or too susceptible to weathering to be left in place, as well as helpful interpretative exhibits. Some of them date back to the pre-Roman era. The instruments of ordinary life are displayed here, including rows of amphora and other vessels, furniture, and various household and commercial objects. Plaster casts fashioned from nearly flawless molds left in the solidified ash by the bodies of those caught in the quick disaster are also on display. When excavators discovered these gaps, they were meticulously filled with plaster, forming images of the victims as they attempted to flee. They make Pompeii more than simply a historical relic by bringing those final moments into gruesome life. Forum The Forum, a Roman town's main square, is surrounded by colonnades and bounded on the north by the three-meter-high Temple of Jupiter. The Macellum, a food-selling hall, is located on the corner to its right. The Forum is surrounded by a number of shrines, temples, and other structures, including the Shrine of the Laras, the Temple of Vespasian, a wool-selling hall, and the Curia, where the town council met. The Basilica was utilized as a market and a court of law nearby. The Temple of Apollo is flanked on its left by 48 ionic columns. The House of Triptolemus, which is located in front of the Basilica, is one of the more recent additions. This building, which dates from the 2nd century BC, was clearly held by a wealthy and powerful family, as evidenced by its two atriums, courtyards, and two peristyles, columned garden courtyards. Piccolo Teatro the Teatro Grande, large theater, was built into the sloping land and is used for sunny tea lumiere shows during the summer. One of the nicest views of the city in Vesuvius is from the top row. The theater depicts class divisions at the time, with the upper classes having broader, more gently sloped stages that were also divided from the masses in the steeper, smaller levels above by a low wall. The nearby Teatro Piccolo, Little Theater, which is better preserved and the earliest example of a roofed Roman theater, was built in 75 BC. It was primarily intended for musical performances. The large theater was one of the first stone theaters built by the Romans, and Pompeii had two stone theaters before Rome did. Isis Temple the Tempio di Isis Temple of Isis, located east of the Little Theater, is devoted to the Egyptian goddess Isis, whose cult was immensely prominent in the Roman Empire. The temple was established in the 2nd century BCE, but it was entirely damaged in the earthquake of AD 62 and rebuilt. The temple is located in the midst of a courtyard surrounded by porticos and sits on a raised base. An inscription etched on its walls by the French novelist Stendhal in 1817 may still be seen. The Tempio di Giove Milicchio is right next door. From here, you can access the gladiators' barracks through a magnificent arcade in the tree-shaded triangular forum, which is primarily meant for theatergoers. 
On its columns, inscriptions detailing their victories in gladiatorial contests were discovered. Stabian Thermal Baths, Stabian Baths The largest and best preserved baths in Pompeii are located at the intersection of Via della Vendanza and Via Stabiana. The entrance leads into the colonnaded palestra, which has a swimming pool on the left and male and female baths on the right, divided by water heating stoves. A circular cold bath, frigidarium, a changing room, a potitarium, with clothing racks, a warm bath, tepidarium, and a hot bath, caldarium, heated by air ducts in the floor and walls are all included in each facility. The gymnasium, which was also part of the Stabian complex, was where gladiators trained. Menander's House the wealthy merchant who owned the huge, well-preserved house of Menander made his position known directly at the entrance, which is flanked by pillars with Corinthian capitals. The atrium is well-preserved, with a small temple in one corner and an unbroken wooden roof that stretches out to the center aperture, where water drained into the pool below. The peristyle is flanked by a stunning painted colonnade, and the interior rooms are ornamented with scenes from Homer's Iliad. The quaint tiny house of the lovers is right next door, named after an inscription that reads, Lovers, like bees, wish life to be as sweet as honey. The Thermopolium, on the left side of Via della Vendanza, is a tavern with drinking vessels, a kettle, a stove, and a lamp, the last customer's money is still on the counter. Scavi Nuovi, New Excavations The commencement of the new excavations is on the right at the far end of Via della Vendanza, where wall murals and furnishings have been left in place. The upper story, with its balconies and loggias, has been preserved by girders in many of the houses, providing a better idea of how these looked two millennia ago. Election posters and other informal writings painted on the walls are still present, as are mosaics, statues, frescoes, and furnishings. The majority of the dwellings and stores in this section of town originate from Pompeii's final phase, and they belong to tradesmen. An ironmonger's shop and a fuller's and dyer's workshop, Falonica di Stefano, with two restored pressing machines should be found. A magnificent painted frieze in the Cryptoporticus house depicts scenes from the Iliad and other Homer poems in a passage leading to the cellar. One of Pompeii's most beautiful frescoes, Venus on a Seashell, may be found at the Casa della Venere, House of Venus. Amphitheater The massive amphitheater at Pompeii's far end, which seated 12,000 spectators and dates from 80 BC, is the oldest surviving Roman amphitheater and the most complete of any built before Rome's Colosseum. The palestra is right next door, featuring colonnades on three sides and a swimming pool in the middle. Outside the city walls, beyond the Porta di Nacera, is a necropolis cemetery, similar to those found outside the walls of all Roman and other ancient towns. Vetii The Vetii house in the Vicolo di Mercurio is one of Pompeii's most fascinating structures. This was the residence of two well-off middle-class brothers, demonstrating that elegantly adorned dwellings were not limited to the elite. This house has some of the best frescoes, as well as a peristyle with original marble decoration and a replanted garden to give you a sense of what it was like when people lived here. Cooking tools are still present in the kitchen. Houses in the West Several residences worth visiting are in the same neighborhood, near Porta Ercolano. The House of the Fawn, located opposite the House of the Vetii, is Pompeii's most palatial mansion, but all of its art treasures, including outstanding mosaics, were carted off to a museum in Naples. Near the House of Syracuse is a bakery with the words Salve Lucrum, Long Life Prophet, inscribed on the door, perhaps they spent theirs on the fine paintings inside. The House of Marcus Lucretius, further along the Via Stabiana on the right, has well-preserved paintings, and the House of the Silver Wedding has a lovely atrium and peristyle. Please don't forget to visit my website to search and book these trips, https colon slash slash tripsandguides.com. What do you think about this video, do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.